Welcome to another edition of WTF 2020, an influencer's guide to navigating the shit show. I'm Peter Clayton. Thanks for tuning in. So what's your opinion of 2020 so far? Here's mine. If someone had written a book or a movie script detailing the dumpster fire that has existed in the United States over the past three years, and especially 2020, no one would have believed it. But here we are swatting flies and shoveling bullshit and trying to wrap our brains around low-budget, crazy B-horror movie plots like QAnon and The Proud Boys. Just when you think it can't get any more insane, somehow it does. So here's WTF 2020. I think the group of influencers, thought leaders, subject matter experts, innovators, and visionaries I've invited to participate in this series can give all of us some inspiration, a renewed sense of purpose, or at least some hope. I'm excited to have on the show today Jackie Clayton, whom I connected with at the HR Tech Collaboration Zone virtual event last month. Ward Chrisman and company have done a really excellent job of facilitating conversations and connections on their monthly virtual events. I'll put a link in in the show notes so you can check it out for yourself. It's an excellent and low-cost way to stay connected to the HR and talent acquisition tech community and learn about the latest trends in tech. Also, I have to give a shout out to Tad and Chief. I was going to wear my Hiring Solve t-shirt for this interview, the one with the uh, I am a hunter on the front. However, thanks to the crack reporting of Joel and Chad, I found out that Jackie is now diversity, equity, and inclusion strategist at SeekOut. Finally, I'm getting some diversity in these videos and podcasts. Frankly, this WTF 2020 series so far has been a lineup of middle-aged white guys, but girl power is definitely coming. A little background on Jackie. She was named one of the nine powerful women in business, you should know, by SDHR Consulting, one of the 15 women in HR tech to follow in 2019 by Vid Kruter, 2019 top 100 list of human resources influencers by Human Resource Executive Magazine, and one of the top recruitment thought leaders that you must follow in 2019 by Interview Mocha Magazine. Jackie, thanks for Zooming with me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm excited about the opportunity. I really am. Texas has been very well represented (laughs) over the past month here. I've had uh, William Tincup and Craig Fisher and uh, now a third Texan, uh, one from Waco. So what's happening in your community, Jackie? What's it like being in Waco, Texas during this pandemic? Let me tell you, it is so, it's been a little bit crazy. Everything's been going online like everyone else. But what's been interesting is that we're still seeing an influx of tourists down here, which is, we we thought, well, I mean, even at the beginning, we're like, why are people coming to Waco, right? And then when we found out, we're like, wait, they're still coming to Waco? Um, But people have been very respectful, even in this large, small town, you know, making sure we're wearing masks, we're doing things, we're getting back to school. It has been really interesting to see the schools just reopen and then they shut down for a little bit. So we are definitely wondering, you know, WTF, just like, just like you and the rest of the community, I tell you. So one of the most interesting things for me over the past few months is the whole Black Lives Matter movement. I had never heard of Black Wall Street, which I have a pretty good education and that was never taught to me in school. And I had vaguely heard of Juneteenth, but really didn't know what the hell it was. So from your perspective, this must be kind of surreal. You know what's the most surreal part? And it reminds me, remember a couple of years ago, that movie Get Out that came out? Yeah. And then when I was talking to some of my lighter skinned friends, <laughs> we'll say, and we talked about the end of the movie and I asked somebody, 
What did you think when the cop came and they would say, I thought, thank God, now he's going to be safe. And I, all of my black friends said the same thing. Oh shit, he's done for, right? And it feels that same way. We realized that we were taught, a lot of us black kids were taught these things and assumed that everybody just knew these things. And so part of what's been surreal is that understanding of people, the way that we were raised in the communities that we raised, I think one of the biggest hoaxes that has been perpetuated, especially here in the United States, is that we are all the same. And now we're starting to realize, no, we're not all the same and that's okay. There are a lot of things that we can be in alignment with, but we didn't get that education in school. And so it's been, it's been interesting to see. Um, I knew about Black Wall Street and I remember as a kid being so upset. My mother um, always taught about Black History Month and she would drag us into these things and we'd have to go set up at the library and it was so embarrassing. That I, well, why are we doing this? only to learn like people didn't know what Juneteenth was. Now being a Texan, I have always known what Juneteenth was. Right. But there's other things that we haven't learned in this country. Even th with that, like this month is National Filipino American History Month. Now, did you know that Philippine, the people from the Philippines came over to what we now call the United States, to what we now call California, in the 1500s. They were here before the people from England, it wasn't called America, and we all kind of learned that America started, everybody here in this land started when people came over from England. But 200 years before the Declaration of Independence was signed, we had Filipino people coming to this country. There's a lot that now we just have to dig in and find out what we weren't told as kids. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, there, there, there's so much. And then, then you, you know, look at uh, Native American history that just, you know, like the Trail of Tears. Was that ever taught in my school? No. Right. <laughs> it's, it's just it's remarkable how whitewashed history has become. And of course, a lot of this has to do with local boards of education and yes. what they approve, right? Uh, yes. And if you started looking at what they uh, started promoting most recently about stopping diversity uh, recruiting uh, on a national level, because it's, it's letting people think, well, it's making people think that America is a bad place. And even in the most recent debate, when they said, I don't believe there's systematic racism, you could have knocked me over with a <laughs> feather. <laughs> I was like, yeah. uh, you know, I yeah. was like, I, he might want to get <sighs> tested again because something's not right. Something's not That's right. That's right. Yeah, no kidding. Back to uh, your new gig. Uh, yeah. Both both uh, you and our friend Jeremy Roberts have yeah. recently come from Hiring Solve to Seek Out. So, Tell us a little bit about that transition and about Seek Out. I will tell you, funny, Jeremy is my work brother. This is the third time that we've worked together. I, I said the next time we just need to show up as a package deal. Just interview us both together. Even though we do completely different things. Um, Jeremy had uh, started at Seek Out very quick, within a couple of weeks. And apparently while he was there, um, our CEO Anoop asked, uh, asked him a little bit about me because of my diversity and inclusion work. What's interesting Ooh. about Seek Out is that they have a diversity filter that's able to find various candidates and their, their clients have been asking for additional assistance um, in trying to put these things together. So. It's a very, it's a very different product, but what is nice is that we still have the ability to work with our, our existing clients or clients that are coming in. My role as the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, strategist is going to be to work with our various clients to make sure that they're reaching those goals, but then also 
and working in educating the talent acquisition market on how we can make this better. Um, I fully believe right now you see a lot of people that are called diversity recruiters. And I think pretty soon they're going to be recruiters and everybody's going to have to take responsibility internally for this, for making sure that we have equal um, representation at corporations so that we can have equal market share. I mean, that's ultimately the goal. Um, and what's nice at Seekout is being able to have that data piece so you can back it up and let people know like what the current status is. What does the market look like? What do your competitors look like? So you can kind of see what we can glean from open information, what the internet is telling us about your organization and, and look for those experts in places that you wouldn't readily come available if you were just searching on your own. You are in a really crowded space. There are a lot of companies out there who are promoting their, their product in, uh, in search and acquisition using AI and machine learning as something that takes the bias out of the process and is more um, inclusive. Right. But a lot of the recruiters I've talked to go, yeah, well, you know, that's a nice thing. But it seems like what Seekout is doing, and especially in bringing you into this role, you're taking it a little bit more serious than some of your competitors. Yes. And the nice thing is that they were taking it seriously from the beginning, which is nice. If you look through the history, they have a lot. I mean, it's a young company, but they've been promoting diverse workspaces from the very beginning. And so they re recognize that, you know, it takes more than just finding the candidates. And, and I think that's the difference um, I hope that I can bring to the table. Because you're right, it really, when you're looking at these situations, it's, it's, it's great that you can find the candidates, but that doesn't help recruiters feel comfortable when they're talking to people to understand how they can communicate that information, make sure there isn't tokenism, make sure your workplace is a place where people are gonna feel comfortable because it, hiring and finding is the first part. Keeping and retaining is a different part. Making sure these people are heard and that they can make a big difference within the company takes it to a whole nother level. And the difference when you talk these companies, a lot of these companies just are bringing the easy hanging fruit data that you can get, you know, to try to put these things together. But you really have to look at the disaggregate data to figure out exactly where you can leverage these diversity opportunities. So for example, you say company Acme Brick, they have 50% male and 50% female, right? Oh, that must be great. But then upon find out that of that 50% are 30 is in marketing, 2% in IT. And then you're like, wait, there's something wrong with this math. We have to dig in a little bit deeper or, oh, we have a large African-American, which 25%. And you realize all of them are in customer service. No, none of them are at the executive level. And so you really have to understand the different areas within diversity. It's very complex. Yeah. Um, you have to go beyond, you have to have the data, but you have to be able to tell the story. And so the data isn't enough in order to get these things put through. And neither is quite frankly, because it's the right thing to do, right? We always hear, oh, diversity is the right thing to do. Well, so is the eating right and flossing and people don't do that either. And so you have to be able to show them exactly where we're going and exactly why. And so that's why you really wanna strategize with your clients and with people out there so you can get it on track to have an actual message moving forward, getting all of that together so that you can make that business case and make sure it's sustainable. One of the interesting aspects of this whole thing is every, every research I report I've seen, and I've been covering this industry for like 15 years now, um, that looks at diversity, that looks at gender parity within companies, companies that have women in executive roles that are diverse, are more profitable. Uh, the employees uh, stay longer. 
I mean, the, the statistics are just off the charts. And yet there's so many companies that just ignore this. Well, you know, somebody, I was at a conference. It was actually the Women in, Inform- Women in Technology International Conference. And it had to be seven years ago. And I talked to a person who came out of Apple that described what was going on at the first original iPad. And they built it out and they were showing it before they started doing QA testing. And and they didn't have any women on the development team the very first run, but they had a full female QA team. And they went through the horse and pony show and the way it was explained to me, one of the women said, how is a woman gonna put that in their purse? Because what they developed was too big. So they went back to the drawing board and had to start over. And now we know because of that, not only were they able to give a product, because we know women are, are large consumers of, of electronics and technology, um, it's the standard now. That size, when right. you look at the iPad, every other you know knockoff iPad or Kindle or all those different things, or all have that same status. And it and it started with, uh, you know, a woman being there to ask that question. Now imagine if the woman was on the IT team, how much time, on the development team, how much time we can save and money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like what it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense. So give us a sense of what your job diversity, equity and inclusion strategy entails. Uh, You know, uh, give us a day in the life of Jackie. (laughs) Well, I wake up around. (laughs) Yeah. Um, well, what I'm looking at, some of it is, is looking at the various clients that we have on site or the ones that are potentially there that have diversity initiatives. And we're trying to figure out how, what are the, what does that mean? The first step is always finding out what diversity means to them. Um, for me as a black woman, you would think instantly, oh, we're talking about, you know, women, people of color, but diversity is is a much broader than that. So you have to find out with your, with the people that you're working with exactly what their definition of diversity means for them. Sometimes it means bringing more men in, or maybe it means bringing, you know, you have to look at what the current, the current layout is and then try to ask them, how are they measuring that? Do they have KPIs around that? Is this a business initiative? Do they have goals of percentages or dates, you know, and making sure that they understand those things. And then we really want to look at the recruiting team. Do they have a dedicated, you know, do they have dedicated diversity recruiters? Where is the initiative coming from? And then we can build together with the various clients an actual strategy for reaching those KPI goals. Because you can't just recruit diverse candidates for diversity's sake. I mean, you you can, but if you want to make sure that this is successful to get that success you're talking about with all of the clients getting that return on investment from adding to diverse teams, you really want to strategize around that. And it really means making sure that you have that top talent. And so it, it will be, from there, we're going to look at what the existent base is, where are where are they located? Where are their offices located? And where's the talent? Um, I will tell you, we, we talk about how crazy 2020 is, but one of the best things that has come out of this recent time is that companies have learned um, to have remote workforces, no which kidding. is yeah. enabling them, instead of trying to recruit someone from Atlanta to go work in Omaha, Nebraska in efforts you know, to have a diverse group, you can now hire diverse populations and they don't have to relocate. So that has been helpful. And so we're able to go in, there's an item within Seek Out, it's called Insights. So we're able to see if they're looking for a top scientist with biopharma experience, there's an expert search. We can look for those experts, where are African-Americans or where are you know Asian or uh, Latino or it's Hispanic. And we can look at those lists of where they are, what companies they work for, and then you just start your recruiting process. It's able to, to save a lot of time. So we want to be able to give them the numbers so they can start so that they can reach those goals. And so it's a little bit different when you're, you're looking at it. We have the skills, but then we're adding that in from the beginning so that you're not chasing, chasing your tail. Got it. Which is, you know, that's the big piece. And then we'll follow up and make sure that we're reaching those goals together. And, you know, of course, 
Um, it's, I will be there along the way to make suggestions and, and take a look at what's going on and see what's working. And then we'll just work on the strategy until we can find the sweet spot so we can get those candidates over there for them. Well, you know, speaking about remote workforce, your company is based in Bellevue, Washington. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. And it's a long way, way go, <laughs> it's a long way yeah. away from Bellevue. <laughs> um, so I imagine you spend a lot of your time every day on, you know, on a video conferencing platform. All day. With your colleagues. Yeah. All day. You might not know, you can see my little, uh, my fake background behind me. Now I have a full green screen behind that because I'm on all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another interesting thing about this whole thing, Jackie. And, and, and everyone I've talked to is saying everyone has to upgrade their video game. Yes. You got to get some lights. You got to get a, you know, a decent camera. You have to have some sort of microphone and, a, you know, an ethernet connection to your laptop so that you have a good, strong connection. So you're not dropping out and, uh, you know, buffering all day long because that yes, would drive I, you absolutely crazy. I actually got a gaming computer to which my 17 year old son just knew it was for him. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but it was like, no, I need it so that I can have all of these electronics connected to it and it doesn't drop out in the middle of the presentation. Right. Um, but you do. I mean, I have to say, because people are going to start judging people by the clarity right. of the video That's or right. whether or not you can see the green screen or not. Right. Or yeah. or, or the locations. Um, and and you really need to, to get in those spaces. And it's tough now because a lot of people have their kids at home, too. That's right. Yeah. It, it, the balancing act is is really become crazy, especially if you have young kids, you know. Yeah. I was um, meeting in the, uh, and with an executive from a very well-known company. And then their third grader came in because their Zoom connection went down and they couldn't get back into their class. And <laughs> it was mass hysteria. You know, you had to get yeah. back to it. Yeah. That's where, where soft skills really come into play these days. Because you, you really have to have empathy for people who are are you know, we're all trying to figure this out. Yes. I mean, our world has been turned upside down and, um, you know, for a, lo a lot of people, especially people who have traditionally gone into an office for me, it's not, you know, I've, I've worked out of my studio for years, so this isn't, but you know, for me, it's just been, well, I, I'm not going to conferences and events. Um, yes. and I've lost a lot of weight. Thank you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, those, those buffet lines with the sugar and the carbs <laughs> and the cocktail receptions, uh, will really kill you. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, speaking about that, I mean, there's no more travel, no more live speaker gigs. I know you speak oh. a lot at events. Have you uh, transitioned into speaking at virtual events and what, what kind of an, you know, adjustment has that been for you as someone who has, you know, been out there and, and very active in the community and always visible, you know? Listen, it has been rough. I mean, I can tell you the adjustment, rough maybe is a little bit too strong of a word. It has been an adjustment. Um, You know, what is interesting, we went, there was a conference a couple of weeks ago and they invited all the speakers early. And we were so excited. Half of us were almost in tears because we hadn't seen each other in a year. And you realize, like right now, it's like, oh, isn't this when HR Tech was supposed to be? Yeah, I know. And on, on you know, Facebook gives you those memories of where you were last year. That's and right. so every single conference, you get a, a picture with your friends. Um, it has definitely been an adjustment. Uh, and... It also has been interesting learning various technologies. Every conference seems to use some different type of platform in order to get it done. There hasn't been anything really consistent. Um, it, it has been tough, you know, because sometimes you have the most perfect setup, but then your host doesn't have a good setup. Right. 
and they break down. Uh, I was at a conference, I did a speaking engagement where for some reason we found the bug in the software and when the host put it on mute, I was on mute. Was on, so the host had to stop being on mute in order for it to work. For, for me to be heard, she had to leave her camera not on mute. And it was awkward. So we could hear everything that she was doing every time she moved and everything that was going on. But that, that for some reason, we did something that found a bug. Um, it, it has also changed the way, you know, I, I will tell you what I like and prefer because one of the things that is important and what's so special about these events is because you do get to talk to each other about what you just saw or who did you see, or you have kind of side conversations, you know, you're with your buddies and in the back and you're talking about, oh, did you hear that? Or what do you think? So I, I prefer when the chat is live during the, the session, you know, so that they can still have those conversations. Even better is if it's pre-recorded, so you know you're not going to drop in the middle right. of the conference. You can test the sound and change it if you need to, but then you are also in the room so you can answer questions as they come up, as they're watching the presentation. It's a little cringy seeing yourself and then hearing yourself, but that gives you a lot more you know, touch points. Um, but it still doesn't equal being able to give someone a hug that you haven't haven't seen. Um, and you do miss that live interaction when you're, you know, you're sitting talking to yourself in the kitchen over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's been really interesting is the way people are utilizing these platforms, because a lot of them have gone to free events. These events that, you know, were so, were so valuable, and they're still really valuable in, in an effort because they knew no one was going to go fly to those locations or buy tickets for that have made them free events. And so. Yeah. HR tech. I mean, I know of all conferences oh. to go free HR tech who yes. traditionally collected every nickel and dime off the floor that oh. they possibly could. Well, it's now doing waited free. Till the last minute. I mean, yeah. we kept saying what's happening. Are they going to, are they going to cancel? <laughs> like what's happening? Yeah. Um, and they did that, the only thing they could do. Absolutely. Basically. Absolutely. Um, and it all of this started, by the way. I was supposed to talk at South by Southwest, right. and you know they were one of the first large events that canceled. Yeah, and and they took a long time to cancel too. They it was did. on and off, and then all you know because my friend Jessica Miller Merrill was supposed to host an event there and, yes. and speak there. And, you know, and she lives in Austin and she didn't, you know, know up until like, it was very close to the, when the event was supposed to happen when they canceled. And it was like two, almost like two weeks. And the other thing was I called the hotel as soon as I thought. And she said, Oh, you you're lucky. Cause you only had 45 minutes left before we were going to refuse your deposit. <laughs> oh, jeez. I said, don't you have Google? Like, do you know what's happening right now? <laughs> Show me some grace. Oh, that was, yeah, it's, you know, this is, this virtual stuff is only going to get better. I mean, let's face yes. it. There are a lot of people who are working on this technology right now, trying to figure out how to make the virtual event more uh, exciting, invigorating, um, collaborative, and give people a better experience, which to me has some very unsettling uh, consequences for especially the large conferences yes. going forward. When yes. are we ever going to see, a, you know, a SHRM annual with 25,000 people right. or a HR tech? With, right. you know, 10, 15,000 people or an Unleash, I mean, or even an, an ERE with several thousand people. When is yep. that going to happen again? You know, and it, it, it and we're getting to the point where people look, people will cancel and they're in their kitchen 
people are showing up late and not coming to events. <laughs> they they just have to go from the bedroom to the office. We're right. you know we've gotten to that point where it is going to be a while from now, and it'll take time. I mean, an example of this, and this kind of you know. I was watching a YouTube video that was talking about the laugh track and they were like, doesn't that now there's no laugh track because it sounds stupid. Cause then, you know, nobody's there. And they were like, well, how long have we done that? And, and, and you're right. And this goes, what this reminds me of is when, you know, when we were talking about all this AI and what was that going to mean for recruiters? And we were talking about the skills people were going to need. And that goes to where we are now. What skills are you going to need because of, we'll just call it 2020, right? Right. Like you said earlier, you're going to have to have better equipment at home. You're going to have to have better service. No more, oh, I'm sorry, this side of the house doesn't get a good connection. You're going to have to work all of those things out. And the the fastest people to get that together are going to be the ones that stand out. Yeah, They're going to be the ones that stand out. I think you're absolutely right. And, and also the people that are having these events have to get their product together to make this work. Um, yeah. And yeah, so Unleash just relaunched, relaunched with a new virtual product that's really, they, they've really done a great job of transitioning into yeah. the virtual world, into a very, very, you know, traditionally Unleash has been a really high end A player in, in the conference yes. space, right? Yes. And they have done the same thing on their new platform. It's uh, it's really encouraging to see. I will tell you, I um, you know, uh, HR virtual Bamboo HR, their conference was yesterday, and they've been doing it a long time. But they, you know, if people are wondering, they should call because they had some really interesting, innovative things that you don't usually see. Um, the way they did it was nice to have all of the documentation in the various rooms. They were, it went off without a hitch, um, at least from my perspective, which is good. It might have had lots of hitches, but I couldn't tell of any of them. So that means that that was good. Um, but you're going to have to get those things because you have to make it interactive. Because That's as right. much as people are doing this at home, they don't want to sit. They've been sitting and staring at their computer. Now we do it six to eight hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, and you know you can't you can't make these things webinar. No, you know no. because that's just not going to work. And and no. a, a lot of these virtual events are virtual webinars, basically. Yes. I, I mean, they'll be like they you can't. It's gr we do have the technology now. There's a lot of different things that allow us to do this video conferencing, but you know it it's called go to webinar, not go to conference, right? right? It is not made for that. And That's there's right. too many things that go on. Um, again, like you can't do the chat or you can't have reactions. And and the speakers are going to need that information as well. They need that feedback in order to right. keep going. Um, you need to have an MC that's there in case something goes wrong or just to interact with people to make sure, you know, things are going well. You have to beef up that staff um, because... You're also, you know, people are working remote or virtually and they have options. They can just turn you off. Exactly. It's not and like they're so, sitting in, in a conference hall somewhere. Right. Um, they, you know, they're, they're at home. And if, uh, you know, if your connection is flaky or if, if you're boring or not allowing interactivity to happen, not allowing them to actually participate in what you're doing, they're just going to go off and do something else. And they do it quick. I tell they you, do. I was on the back end of a conference and the person said, oh, I can't, I'm having a problem with my slides. And I'm not kidding. They lost 200 people wow. in five seconds, gone. As soon as it was like, oh, I'm having a problem with my slides, they were out. And only, um, it was less than half came back after the next session. Wow. And yeah. they knew, they were like, freaking out because it's, that's all it takes for someone to find something else that's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, or go get a snack. <laughs> they <were just> yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> their virtual, their virtual uh, buffet line. Um, yeah. 
but that's something else. So my, my sister, she has been working for 25 years at Robert Half as an event planner. Now they have internal events and I've asked her cause I was like, I was shocked that she was still busy. And some of the things that they've been doing that I, I hope people consider is like they had um, like a chef night and they, they sent packages to everyone to like cook with this interactive chef. And they had, you know, different things where they can bring all of, all of them together. And that's the other person that's going to win. Um, it's having the right technology, but like we said, engaging people so that we can have that sense of community because we're all missing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. And I, I think that's a great idea. And when, when I talked to, to Craig Fisher about this, who now is hosting uh, and producing a lot of events for companies, um, you know, he said, don't, don't cheap out, send, send people who are participating, you know, the, your swag and, and, or, or something and to get them excited about what you're doing, you know, yeah. so don't just look at this as, Oh, we're going to save a lot of money because we're not spending thirty thousand dollars on a booth at HR Tech this year. If you really want to engage people, spend some money. Yes, you know, and reach out to them and send them a T-shirt or a yes. coffee mug or something. You know, it's been cool. I mean, seek out. They are um, they're sponsoring at ERE, and they came up with the official shirt, right? And they customized it specifically for ERE and had one customized specifically for SourceCon to make, you know, have that connection. And then, you know, where you were just like, you know, like a concert teacher. You know, yeah. That's, a, that's a great idea. It's really smart to do that. And also if you're having an event and back to, I brag on bamboo, but they sent all of their speakers, a full media kit with a camera, a speaker, you know, some other uh, equipment, you know, like a dongle so they could plug everything in. Uh -huh. um, and they had a little hashtag for your unboxing. And I'm telling you, every single speaker was like in awe of the things they got. A t-shirt. That's a really smart. Sticker. And so, because they were going to make sure you were going to look good and sound good. No excuses. We're going to send it to you. And it was not cheap. And think about it. I, I, it's, it seems like that's a really expensive gift, but it's a lot cheaper than airfare, that's hotel, right. food, and all the buffets. I mean, they can send you those kits. And if you want it to be done right and you have all these speakers, you have to set them up for success. You have to set them up for success with, with equipment because not everybody, like you said, they don't have it. You know, those ring lights were practically sold out on Amazon for the longest yeah. time. I know. Everybody needs a little beauty lighting, you know. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that, that is so smart of Bamboo to do that, you know, because first of all, you know, talk about elevating your cachet with a, a group of influencers who you've invited to speak at your event. Wow. I mean, yes. that's, that's the way to do it. Yes. Right? Impressive. And um, they had all those things together. And take a little extra time to, you know, boost your people that are going to be there to do all of these events. A lot of us are getting tapped right now because people are going virtual and they're trying to get those connections. A lot of event companies are doing those things and you really have to stand out because there's a lot of different options. There's a lot of options. Um, we know the traditional ones that we would normally go to are kind of struggling because so many events are, are going on and people, you know, there's could be two or three events on, on a, on a given day. Yeah. Um, but it will be interesting. I don't know. I mean, there's no telling when we're going to get back to that space. There's no, especially international conferences. Mm -hmm. There's no telling when we're going to be able to do it. I, 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 right now it just seems like so hard to imagine. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be very slow in coming. And I think, um, and again, this talking with a number of people about this, regional events, smaller regional events, I think we'll, we'll start with that. Um, and also, I, I think a lot of companies are going to host their own small yes. events yes. where they, you know, they invite 50, 100 people, 
they're the right people. Um, they're either their customers or prospects, user conference type things. I think you're going to see a lot of that rather than, again, spending 30 grand to go put up a booth in some exhibit hall somewhere. Why don't we take that 30 grand and yes. have our own event? We can, you know, I mean, iSIMS is bringing in um, Trevor Noah to speak at their event next month. I mean, come on. I mean, that's, oh, that's, that's heavy duty. That's really heavy. And that's the other thing. They can't go anywhere so that you have access to a lot of these people of doing those things. And you know what is funny and what you can do, you know, no charge for this, you know, little tidbit. There's a, a YouTuber who, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Cameo, but on Cameo, they have movie stars and, and actors and sports players, and you can pay a fee and they will do an announcement for you. So you can pay a hundred dollars to get them to say, Everybody listen to Peter's podcast. You know, they, they, right. they do all the things. And it's 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 really inexpensive investment to have one of these super influencers to say, go to, you know, use the influencer marketing to say, go to ERE or, you know, go right. to HRTX. Um, you're going to have to stand out. And, and influencer marketing is going to really because people have more time and they're all online more than they have ever before That's right. um they're gonna have to look into that in order to get get some things done but i'm telling you just pay it's like a hundred bucks that's a really cool idea to do it you know yeah. i should get one for us i'm gonna get one for us <laughs> <laughs> there you go so so jackie what has inspired you over the past seven or eight months if anything <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I tell you what really has inspired me. And at first it broke me. It was all of this unrest. And I felt completely unsafe, completely unsafe um, with the Breonna Taylor and, and George Floyd and civil unrest and all of these things going on. I felt so unsafe, even in my own home, in my cute little Waco, Texas town. Um, and then an interesting thing happened. You started finding allies and people were having support and people were wanting to know. And again, like we kind of started out understanding that people honestly weren't told some lessons and they don't know, they want to know, and they want to rally to bring the world together to make it a better place has inspired me. It has really inspired me. And I really realized, like I said, there were things that I was taught that maybe you weren't taught and things you were taught that I wasn't taught and we can come together and it's just better. Um, I think of it as, uh, you know, I don't know if, if you're into music or into like listening to jazz, but you could sit there with one symbol all by yourself. And it, I mean, you can make some music, but then you have to get this guitar and then you get a bass and you get a pianist and you get all these and they're all different and they bring it together. And then we're all grooving together, right? We're all right. listening to it and we're all happy. And, and I, I look at diversity like that. Like if you aren't diverse, you're a one note player, right? And you can make some music, but you're only going to attract other people that like just one note. And there's a whole lot, the majority like the jazz. Let me just tell you, they like it better. And so I, I just, that's inspiring me, you know, bringing people together that we're actually looking at it for what it is, understanding, wow, we need to do better. And people are really trying to do that. And so, you know, I volunteer as tribute to help do that. And so I'm excited to start the journey. It's going to be long. Yeah. But, you know, there's, it's nice to have all of these allies and people coming together and learning because you'll remember Juneteenth next year. I will. Yeah. <laughs> you can even come to Texas. We'll go to Galveston together, you know, we'll have a picnic. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 As long as there's a vaccine. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> if they let us in. Yeah. I don't know. They might keep the Texans in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
I really appreciate your time today, Jackie. This has really been fun and to be able to connect with you. Um, you, you had mentioned before we started recording that, that you were doing some ghost recruiting. Yes. Um, so what advice do you have for folks who are out there looking for a job right now in this really insane job market? Yes. Well, I would say, number one, you might not get the perfect job. I think all of us, if you're a, you know, a laid off or whatever your situation is, we always have this, okay, my next job is going to do da, 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 da. It's like when you say, oh, my husband's going to be six foot eight and rich and, you know, smart and fun. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You might have to look and flex a little bit. So be open to the opportunities, be open to listen, no, give companies an opportunity to sell you. I would say that. Um, the other part is when you're talking to companies, I think people need to enhance their answer of tell me about yourself. Um, they don't want to hear you your resume. When people are asking, tell me about themselves, tell them where you're going and how your experience helped get you there, right? Tell them, you know, my goal is to be the best administrative assistant that helps a company run more efficiently. You know, when I was at Starbucks, I was able to do blah, 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 blah. Put those things together and, and hold on as long as your time as you can. Know your limits. Um, I know that we want to find a job that fits, but make sure you're listening and looking at these opportunities and don't get to a point where you're completely desperate and, and, and tapped out. You might need to accept that some of those jobs in a temporary basis and hang on until things can get settled. Um, those of us that are in recruiting know that every election year, people halt uh, hiring this time of year. Um, to find out what's going to happen next, because it makes a difference on who they can hire and the money that they're going to have. And all. And so that's an election year without COVID. And now we got COVID on top of that and, and everything else that is going on. So be patient, but be mindful. Um, you can learn to want what you get, but you can't always get what you want. And so I think I'll leave it with that. That's uh, that's some really great advice. And, and you're absolutely right. This is an election year like none we have ever seen before in our lives and it is scaring the shit oh, out of me funny it's going oh, already <laughs> already either way either way it goes it is not going to be over that night no we should do a live podcast that night we should do a reaction video <laughs> starting at 10 eastern <laughs> there you go <laughs> It might be both of us going. Oh God! Hanging I, with our mouth open. Yeah, I know. Well, Jackie, thank you again. It's uh, it's really been a pleasure to get together with you, and I'm so happy that I uh, connected on that um, HR tech collaboration zone thing, and we were able to connect there. Yes, we have to do this again. Let's connect. We, we do. See what we can see what we can do and collab on that stuff. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad I showed up. We need to send Ward a letter. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, this, will this will go live next week. I'll send you all the links and, uh, I look forward to staying in touch. All right. Perfect. Yes. Let me know. I'm going to buy you a cameo. Peter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It'll promote us. <laughs> that, uh, I, I'm, I'm all for that. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you so much. Let me know if you need anything else. I will. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. I forgot to ask Jackie how to connect with her. I'll put a link to her LinkedIn profile and speak out in the show notes. You can connect with Jackie on Twitter at Jackie, that's J-A-C-K-Y-E Clayton, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N, Jackie Clayton. Thanks for tuning in.